Hello everyone. So I decided to make a quick, um, hopefully quick video of me working through the lesson two lab from scratch. Um, I saw that some of you had a few issues getting set up or just understanding the concepts we're talking about here. Um, and I was hoping this video would help. If things like this are helpful, um, if you reach out to me earlier in the week or if I see a tone of the certain kind of questions that are being asked in the collaboration tab, I'll try to address this with a you know quick video, 15 minutes, just walking through what you need to do to get uh, set up with something. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. So let's go to the home page for the course. There we are, and we're going to go to lessons. I'm going to scroll down to unit one and lesson two. We'll go to labs, then we'll go to our band page lab, which is a semantic HTML and inline CSS lab. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download the starter and lesson. I'll make sure I don't already have these. I'm going to delete these two. I'll go ahead and download the starter and the lesson two lab. There we go. So I'm starting from fresh. I've downloaded these two. I also need Notepad++, um, but they don't make that for Mac. So if some of you were trying to look for Notepad++ and you couldn't find it, um, that could be one reason why it wasn't working on your computer. Because if you try to download it, um, you'll just get an exe file and those don't run on a mac um so you know i would just recommend that you can uh, you have two options so one thing you can do if you're stuck and you don't have another choice um or maybe it's like the last night before it's due you if you have no other option you can code in your native um text editing tool that's available to you and that will be Notepad on Windows and Text Edit on Mac. And so on Windows, um, so yeah, all you need to do is Google HTML editor, and this will take you, give you this link for W3 Schools HTML editors. And this says, you know, a simple text editor is all you need to learn HTML. Um, Notepad++ and Sublime and certain other tools were built to make your life a little easier. Um, you don't need them, but uh, you know they do provide some out of the box functionalities that will help uh, with your coding experience. Um, but if you don't have anything else, or if you can't get something to work, you can use Notepad or Text Edit. So these are Windows instructions for using Notepad. These are Mac instructions for running Text Edit, and you'll open those. You'll add some HTML content. And then when you save that file, you save it as an HTML file. And when you do that, when you open it again, you can actually see the HTML working. And so this is what Code Academy is actually doing behind the scenes. It's taking your HTML and it's converting it into an HTML file. But when it shows it to you, it shows it to you in a text editor so you can make those changes. Um, but yeah, so... I am going to be using Sublime for this, but you can use whatever text editor you want. Don't let that be a hang up in your journey. Um, you can really use any editor and you know if Notepad++ is not working for some reason, you could just search you know best text editor for Mac. Or you could under Sublime there's Atom. Um, you can use a bunch of these. Uh, same with Windows or Linux. You could just find you know, whatever works, Notepad++, Sublime. Um, I use Sublime because it just works across different operating systems. That's my favorite part about it. But use whatever, you know, feels good to you. Um, but let's get started. So I've downloaded these two files, and they're right over here. So I've got the Lesson 2 instructions, and I have the starter, which is zipped up, okay? A few people got stuck on this part. You know, how do I do anything with a zip? All you need to do is double click it and you get the file inside. Um, this should work the same for Windows and Mac. If you have any trouble, you could also just right click and click um, like extract. Um, they don't have that option in Mac, but in Windows, you might see like an extract or something like that. So all you need to do is that and you'll see the file inside. So anyway, 
So that's the starter file I'll be working with. And I'll open that with Sublime. So on your computer, to open it with your IDE, you'll right click and you'll click open with, and then you can pick you know, whatever app you want to open with. Alternatively, you can also open, like say the default is text edit for Mac and Notepad for Windows. You can also just go to like, well, as soon as I try to open it, it's gonna ask me, you know, what do you wanna open in your text editor? Now I can go to my downloads and I can open starter lab that way too. And this will open it in a text edit but I want to work in Sublime because that's what I feel comfortable with. So that's where I'm gonna go. There we go, okay. So this is the starter um, kind of skeleton that we gave you to work on um, to get as close as possible to the final product, which is this right here. So let's see what you know we're working with. Let's try to open the starter in Chrome. There we go. So we don't have a ton, right? We're starting from scratch and we gotta get it close to what I just showed you earlier. So let's do that. Um, I'm gonna go back to the instructions. Can I just put this over here? No, I can't, okay. Well, let's just scroll up. Okay, so what are we supposed to do? I know when you first read this, you're like, what is this talking about? I don't understand. Um, just keep reading um, and it'll make sense. So what are we supposed to do? This doesn't matter, okay? Because this is not the meat of what we're doing. These are just objectives of what we'll hit if we are to go through this whole thing. All right, we're gonna go down here. It is expected that you have read the required reading for this lesson. Now, obviously, if you're starting this assignment on Friday and you haven't done the required reading yet, you're gonna get stuck. Okay, so it's good to have all that background done, all the code academies done, so you can at least hit the ground running. And then the only problems you have to fidget with is like, how do I get set up with this lesson? All right, the next thing to remember is the naming convention. A lot of you have been missing this, so keep that in mind. Um, okay, what are we going to be doing? We're gonna modify the attached starter.html, so that's this file, to meet the lab instructions below. Then you're going to use a validation tool to validate your code, take a snapshot of the results and insert them into an MS Word document. And then the attached validate will be in this format, and then submit all of your files to Blackboard. Okay, so let's start. Open your editor and immediately save the attached file stub with the correct naming convention. Okay, so it's already open and it's already saved on my computer, so I don't have to do anything. I've opened it in my text editor. Review the tree hierarchy below for the required web page structure. Use the tree hierarchy diagram to complete and finish the starter.html file to meet the required web structure, enter the missing tags, the missing content, see additional details below for the tree hierarchy, okay? And then add the inline CSS that you need. All right, and then validate, and then you're done. Okay, so what's the tree hierarchy for the lab? All right, there's an HTML tag. Everything is inside the HTML tag. So when we go over here, Oh, so you see this fancy coloring right here? This is something that you would get out of a fully featured text editor. So you wouldn't get this in Notepad or Text Edit, but you would get something like this in Notepad Plus Plus or Sublime or any of the other ones. So this is why programmers like to opt for a um, fully featured text editor because then it shows you all the attributes in a different color, you know, all the headers in a different color. You can kind of close out certain parts of the um, structure to manage the entire file better. All right, so let's go line by line. So it starts off, HTML encapsulates everything that is in your file. So right here, see this HTML tag? Everything else is inside that HTML tag. All right, after that, there's a head and a body. Okay, so you can see inside here, HTML, there's a head right here. 
and a body. So that's all we have. We have an HTML with a head inside and a body. All right, checks out so far. Then inside a head, we have a title and a meta. Sure, we have a meta and we have a couple titles here. That checks out. Okay, so far so good. Doesn't look like we really have to mess with the head, though we are asked in this to choose a band or concert to design a web page for. Okay, I'll come up with a band. Hmm. Let's do Weezer. I don't know. I only know one Weezer song. Weezer um, 2022 comeback concert. Woo. All right. That's our new title. I can check it out real fast if I go here and I update. Now it says Weezer 2022 comeback concert. All right, we're making changes. It's working. That's cool. We'll go back here. Inside the body, they want a div. All right, we have a body and then we have a div and that's all. Perfect. Okay, so we have the body. There's a div. Then inside the div, we have a bunch of different things. We have a header with a H1. Header, H1 done okay while i'm at it you know i could probably infer that i need to update this so my concert name or band so weezer is coming back in 2022 exclamation mark okay then we need an image, all right? There's an image, it's missing. They want us to put an image here. All right, so let's go on Google and try to steal an image. Weezer band images. All right, mm, this one's cool. All right, so I'll save this one. And I'll save it as Weezer um, in my downloads. Yeah, let's see if that comes through okay. WebP. WebP might work or might not work. Usually your common image types will be PNG, JPG, JPEG, GIF. Um, but let's see if this works. So this image was called, I'm gonna open my finder, go to downloads. Weezer.webp. Okay, so if I type in Weezer.web, see this auto completion? This is another feature that um, just comes out of the box in a full text editor. And I'm going to call this Weezer band image. So the alt tag is for um, in case your image does not load for some reason. And the user is going through your website and they're like, what would be here? I don't know what would be here if this image was here. So then this is a way of just saying, you know, Weezer band image, it's an image of the band. Or if uh, people are using accessibility options, um, helpful for them as well. Okay, so there we go. We got our image. We don't need this anymore. And hopefully when we... Oh yeah, we got our image right there. Okay, um, we said that, you know, the dimensions will be set by the file, but if they look wonky like this, you can, you're allowed to edit them and see if, you know, I just made the width a little bigger. That looks a little bit better. All right, we're making progress on our assignment. So we have a header with an H1 inside, we already did that. We have a figure with an image and we just fixed that. Now we have a nav. What is a nav? A nav is right over here, okay? So the nav is supposed to have an H2 inside, okay, right there. So we probably have a navigation bar with or a list with links. So let's just call this whatever you want. Or Let's look at the instructions real fast. You'll need four paragraphs of content. Just provide your own image. You can use a URL to an image. You can use a separate file. You can use the following content from the render navigation section. Okay, so we look at the render and we base our navigation on that. Okay, 
So the H2, so navigation header is just called navigation. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to call it navigation. Okay. Inside, we need to use dates and cost. So the first list um, item will be dates and cost. So inside the H, so href is a link. Inside that tag, I'm going to put dates, what does it say? And cost. And in the next one, I'm going to put calculate event cost form placeholder. Okay. These are linking to something we're not sure what that is yet. Okay. And then there's an about right here. All right, let's go up and read the instructions again because we just did the nav part. So we did this part. We just need the four paragraphs of content. Let me do that real fast after I verify that my changes worked. Okay, we got some links here. They obviously don't work because we didn't um, play with them. And then we have an about section and in the about section, they want four paragraphs of content. Okay, let's go steal four paragraphs of content. So Weezer band, okay. I'm gonna go to wiki and one, two, three, four. Okay, exactly four, perfect. I'm gonna come back in here. And I'm going to paste it under the about. So PP. So I'm going to do, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy it one at a time. So I'm going to copy this. I'll put it in the first P. There we go. All right. Then I'll go to the next P. I'll copy this. And I'll put it in the next P. Then I'll go to the end here. Then I'll open another P tag. See this? This is another part of a, a full text editor. And I'll copy this again. I'll paste it down here. All right, we have two P tags. Here's number three. And here is number four. Boom. All right, you want these to be consistent. So if I have one over here and one over here, you should keep these consistent for readability. I'm gonna put a enter here just to break this up a little bit. And I'm gonna put this P inline and right there. Put another enter here. Boom, okay. And if I go over here and press enter. All right, we have our about me now. All right, making good progress, I think. So now I'll go back here, add, adjust any, okay, provide your own image, navigation section, the footer. Okay, the footer should have the current year and your last name. Okay. So what does the footer say right now? It just says copyright. So what did it say? It should have your current year and your last name. So 2022 Jamil. Save. Perfect. Test your code. Okay, so it looks like we're almost done. Let's see what it says about style, because I know there was an inline CSS requirement. So Use the structure to develop your landing page. I think that is done. So if you look at this landing page, if I refresh it again, we have title, we have an image, we have the nav bot, nav links, we have the about, and there we go, copyright. Okay, add inline CSS styling to the landing page. All right, so what styling are we adding? So start with body. So now we're gonna go to body, and we know we need inline CSS. So there's a few different types. External CSS is what you were using in Code Academy where you had your CSS. Oh, let me see if I can fire up Code Academy. Or actually, I'll just show you external CSS by example. So external CSS, 
means that you know you have your HTML code, and that is referencing a style sheet that is separate, and then your CSS code is going in a separate file. We don't want that for this assignment. We want to exercise inline CSS. That means your CSS styles will live inside the HTML document, which means you'll just have the one document, the HTML document. You won't have a CSS file. So style equals, what do they want with the body? They want a font family and a background color. Okay. Font family. This is the magic of a text editor. All right. And I'm going to do, let's try serif. Save. Nothing changes because this is serif font. If I change it to something else, cursive. Whoa. That's cool. All right. We're going to go with that. So the body is going to have cursive, which means a header and everything changes um, to a different font family. Okay, your choice, you need a primary with two backups for the font family. That means the first one is gonna be your primary and then we're gonna have two backups. So I'm gonna do control space. Okay, so that means, so you're using whatever fonts are available on the web page of whoever is viewing it on the other end. So if I made facebook.com, I can only show you the fonts that you have on your computer unless you can download some of my fonts. And so first, the system's gonna try to pull up cursive. If it can't find a cursive font anywhere on your computer and it can't download it, it's gonna show the backup font. So that's, let's put sans serif for the backup. And then for another backup, let's put serif. Okay, primary with two backups. Let me just Google real fast. Google knows the answer to everything. I'm just gonna Google real fast. Um, backup font CSS. Font fallbacks, okay. How do you do font fallbacks? You just add a comma and then the other one, okay? So it's actually not a space, it's a comma and then the other one. Let's see if that works. Yeah, okay. I think that works. So there we go. We have a font family. Now we need a background color. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do background color. And I'm going to do, let's see, what color is Weezer mostly associated with? Let's see. Uh, let's see some green here, green, green. I think uh, green or blue. Uh, let's go with uh, light green. Enter and boom, light green. Oh, it's kind of ugly, <laughs> but oh, did I stop sharing there? Share my screen again. All right. So, am I recording? Yes. Okay. So, there we go. We have a web page and it's light green. So, we've done everything they needed for the body. And let's keep moving. H1 needs a color of your choice, but the font size has to be 40 px. Okay. So, H1 in the body. So, we're going to start with style and then color. Your choice. I'm going to do bullet. and then font size. Forty px. Save. All right, there we go. It's coming together. Okay. So now we're going to look at the UL list. Huh. Let's see if that's a thing. Style oh, list style type, and they want it to be none. They don't want it to have any style. What does that do? Takes away the bullets, okay. 
Then we're going to go to the P. And they want font family. Sorry, style. Font family. Oh, okay, not in the about. Okay, so where do you want it for? Only for the dates, location, and cost section. So in the dates, location, and cost section, do we need to add anything there? URL, navigation. Let me reread these just to make sure I'm hitting everything. So I got the four paragraphs, file names, image, navigation section, footer, then just test your code. And you have the render. Okay. But we do need to add something here. So font family for the dates, location. Let's just add something here. So we're going to add... Um, May, or I guess May is already passed. Let's do October 22. Location would be uh, Chapel Hill, and it'll be 30 bucks a person. Okay. Save. And okay, we have a concert um, event. So now they want, okay, primary with two backups. All right, so we're gonna, oh, let's just add a couple of these, why not? Doesn't hurt to go above and beyond, plus the more content you have on your, um, why are these weird? Doesn't hurt to have um, too much information, but then also the more information you put on your website, the more it'll help you structure uh, and see how different parts of it fall together. Let's do Raleigh and let's do Durham. Okay, they're going to all the college towns. And because Durham, we'll just do 50 for whatever reason. And Raleigh will do 25. Okay, that's arbitrary pricing. I didn't, there's no logic behind it. Okay, there we go. And we're going to add a style font family. Oh, it's already there. So it's showing me. I don't know if you saw that right there, but that was cool because it shows me my most recent ones because that's probably what I'll pick. Font family. And these, this seems like more important information. So let's go serve. Save that. And then do we need anything else? Nope. Oh, text align only for the jumper. Okay. Copy the style section. Paste it and paste it. Save and let's go back here. Boom. Okay. So yeah, that is all working correctly. I uh, just looks like I need to work on the navigation part and then we're done. So I need the back to top working. Oh, let's just look at the last styling instruction. So text align center for the jumper link in the footer. Okay. Footer has a jumper link right there. Style, text, align, center. That's it. And that's in the center.
now I need to actually make it a link. So a href and jump to the top. So the top is right here. So all we need to do is, I think, put hashtag top record type. Boom. Okay. And then dates and cost should not take us nowhere. It should take us down here. So it's already DC. So all I need to do is put a hashtag here. And it's going to. Boom. All right. This is the assignment. Um, the whole thing is working. Uh, let's just go over it real fast because this is what I would want you to do. So we're going to go scroll all the way up. Use the HTML structure to develop a landing page. Now that might make sense a little bit. Um, add inline CSS styling. So we just did that. Create jumper linkage. We just did that. Apply HTML5 coding conventions and validate your code. So we have that one thing left. Okay. It's expected that you do part reading. Naming convention is last name dash LP dot HTML. So that's definitely not the name of my file. So I'm going to go file save as, or you could go in and rename it as well. Last name dash LP, it says Jamil dash LP. Next, modify the attached to meet the instruction. Okay, we did that, use a validation tool. Submit all your files, okay. Open the tax editor, review the hierarchy, enter the missing tags and the missing content. Okay, we did all these styles. I definitely noticed that. And then we're going to validate. That's done. Four progress of information, linkage, name, navigation section, footer, test your code. Okay, is the doc type HTML? Yes, it is. Use lowercase element name. So, you know, you shouldn't use this shouldn't be capital right here. None of these should be capital. So that's done. Close all elements. So if you know there's a body tag, there should be a close body tag. So we're, I know this is all correct because I didn't mess with a lot of this, but it's good. That's a good thing to check before. Use lowercase attribute values. So not only will the these be lowercase, but also these and all of these. Basically, almost everything is lowercase in HTML. Quote attribute value. So there should be a quote around. Oops, I just messed something up. There we go. There should be a quote. You see these quotes right here? So they should be around every attribute. HTML allows spaces around equal signs. I don't know that we used any equal signs in here. Oh, yeah. Right there. Okay. It allows space around equal signs, but spaceless is easier to read. Yeah, I agree. Don't add blank blank lines and spaces without a reason. So I did add them here, and there was a special reason because I wanted to break these up so that they're separate chunks. But most other things are easily indistinguishable. Also between sections, we have a space that makes sense. Yeah, don't do it for no reason. For readability, add blank lines to large logical blocks. So that makes sense. We added lines. Use lowercase file names with a hyphen. So last name dash tables. Yep, that is good for formatting. We did that. And so if that was the final render, ours looks pretty darn close. Um, in fact, too close. So what I'm going to do is, is there a sage? See you green. Let's try that. Oh, it's the same thing. I'm going to go a different color, light, coral. That seems unique. Background color, light coral. Blue. Oh, <laughs> what I did was, I know what I did. I saved this file as jamil-lp.html, but I'm still changing 
I'm still trying to look at starter. That's not my file anymore. My file is now jamil-lp.html, which is down in Coral. Perfect. So let's try that C green. Boom. And that looks different from this. Okay. Yeah. So the assignment's done. It's ready to turn in. If I were to go turn this in, I would definitely turn in the jamil-lp and the Weezer image and the validation. So let's go get it validated. So you need to validate it. You would just Google HTML validator. Okay, I think I've seen people use this one and this one, W3. Let's use this one. You have two ways to do it. You could either copy your whole HTML and paste it here. So you would just copy it and put it there like this, or you could go to file upload and upload it. So I'm gonna do the uploads. So I'm gonna go to downloads. Check. There are no errors. We win. Okay. So at that point, I would expect you to take a screenshot of this. You can use a print screen button on your computer, or there's different ways. Um, I have this thing in Mac. I don't know if it comes out of the box or not. On Windows, I use a snipping tool. I think you can press start and type snipping tool and it shows up. Um, in Mac, I just press command shift five and it brings up this handy dandy tool and I can capture a certain amount of my screen. All right, and I would turn that in as well. So I think, I believe it asked you, yep. Last name dash validation dash LP dot docs. Okay, doc X. So I just took an image that's not what the teacher wants, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this. So we're done with that part. You know, you can submit that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into a Word doc. All of you have different ways of creating Word docs. Some of you use MS Word on Windows. Some of you are using Google Docs. You just, you know, do it in your local word processor, whatever you have available. I can use pages or I can use Google Docs on my computer. Um, but what I need to do basically is to open a new document and then I just took that screenshot. It looks like it's this one. Blow it up here. There we go. So make this bigger. Let's go away. All right, I'm just gonna put this in the middle. I'm go file, save. Actually, I won't go file, save because I need to export this as a docx. I'm gonna export to Word. That's going to ensure that I get a doc X out of here. I'm going to title this. Oh, did I close the instructions? I think I did. Well, I believe it was called Jamil dash validation. But don't be like me, okay? Just look up what it was supposed to be called before you export it. I want to go to Finder now. Where did I save that? File, export, to Word, next. Oh, I put in deliverables. Okay, well, let's go find in deliverables. Documents, personal, teaching, CTI 110, deliverables, and Jamil validation. There we go, this is a Word document. So if I do the get info on it, it says, uh, name and extension, docx. So there we go, we're good to go. So this assignment is complete now and it's ready to turn in. Um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to message me, preferably post on collaboration first. Um, but yeah, you should be able to take this information and get through lesson two if you had any issues. Um, thanks everybody, bye-bye.